Well, uh, here we are. Uh, I'm getting ready to go into week 12. Um, you know, it always goes by fast, but uh, exciting week. Obviously, uh, you know, battle for the cannon. Um, you know, it's uh, anytime we get a chance to play Reno, it's uh, an exciting deal. Um, coming off tough loss, you know, went up to Hawaii, and our guys played really, really well for three quarters, and, and really deep into the fourth quarter did some really, really good things. Uh, you know, I'm proud of the fight. Obviously, we had to execute. I mean, defensively, we showed them today. It came down to literally like six snaps. I mean, we, um, you know, physically, they dominated all night, really limited the run game, and just gave up some really big plays, and that's been kind of an Achilles heel all year, us defending the pass, you know, uh, deep down there, and I think the biggest thing in the game is we play really well when we run the ball well. We ran the ball extremely well, and we were really physical in the first half. Um, um, the second half, obviously, that fell off a little bit. They matched that physicality, and uh, and we were able to, you know, then they were able to, you know, have that that lead dissipate. So again, unfortunate um, outcome of the game. Really disappointed. I was a long plane ride home. Let me tell you, you get on the plane after a game like that, and. You wake up and it's daylight outside, and you got to go right to work. That's a tough deal. So, but our our guys are excited. They did a really good job of preparing today, and we're excited about uh, Saturday's game against Reno. They do. Uh, where do you stand as far as figuring out how you're going to handle the quarterback situation? Well, you know, the biggest thing is we were curious you know, as the game went on. You know, he'd been out for a long time. You know, so first of all, being in game shape, how is he there? And then um, will he burst? I mean, when he got a chance. And the thing that was really exciting, you saw it in the second half. We ran his own read, and he pulled it and took off. And I mean, he he was moving pretty darn good. That was exciting to see. Um, he was elusive one time. You know, the protection broke down. He got out of there. You saw him on a naked run to the side. And as the game went on, he felt more and more comfortable. So. You know, we're, we're definitely going to um, use him, you know, more this week. Uh, Max is still ready to go. I mean, I, I perceive going into the game, we talked about it as a staff, to use both those guys. At this point, you know, might start? Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll probably wait towards the latter part of the week and let everybody kind of think on a little bit. I think we have a pretty good feeling of what we're going to do. But, um, you know, don't be surprised if you see Armani in there starting off. Um, Max is going to get in there early. I think both of those guys give us the best opportunity right now. And, again, even you know, even if Armani was ready to go, is he, in, is he physically able to play an entire game, you know, in the way he plays? You know, he, I, he's just not in game shape. You're out six weeks. You know, that's a long, long time. When you say game shape, what does that mean, or what are you looking for to see that he is in game shape? In game shape, just literally game shape. You see guys early in the year, you know, you get winded really, really quick. I mean, you, I mean, you saw it a lot with Max. I mean, man, you go back, what is it, three weeks ago, you see him, he pulled the ball twice in a row, and he's literally gasped, and we had to hand the ball off a couple of times. We didn't even call a pass because he just wasn't in game shape. I don't care how much you practice until you play games and you get in there, you know, and you get 40, 50 plays under your belt, it'll wear you out a little bit. So six weeks off is a big layoff. And his injury is different. A lot of times you get a guy with an ankle, ankle or an arm or something like that. So they're still able to do pool workouts. They're able to run. They're able to jog. He was completely shut down in a boot for four weeks. They wouldn't even let him get in the pool. So, I mean, he wasn't able to do anything cardio-wise for a long, long time. Thought he was good game shape wise, or well, I, I you know this last game, I thought it was decent. You know, I think we needed to have two guys available. There was no way he was going to be able to go out there for an entire game. And at the same time, Max has played some really good football. You know, so again, there there's some similarities, but there's some differences. And I thought Max did a really good job of managing things early on. You know, he threw a really nice ball, touchdown pass. He got us in and out of some you know good run checks, and you know, and Max does a really good job with that. When you look at what Ty Ganges does, what uh, stands out to you? He's a, he's a good quarterback. He manages the game well. Uh, and he gives his receivers an opportunity to make a play. Is it, uh, how's he compared to other quarterbacks you faced? Um, I mean, he, he's a good quarterback. Tony, you often brought eight guys in coverage against Hawaii. I'm not asking you to give away your game plan, but yeah. is that kind of – the thinking that play more coverage than, than uh, I guess, attack? You know, I'd say the biggest difference, I mean, there's times that you can do that. Um, Nevada's, you know, Reno's run game's a little bit more um, downhill, a little bit more physical. They're a little bit more efficient running the ball than Hawaii is. You know, again, no knock on Hawaii. Hawaii spins as good as anybody. That's why they've got all the wins that they do. But I don't know if they're as committed to continuing to do it. When, when you look at Reno and what they, and they've had, you know, they've done a really good job this year. Ganji, uh, you know, he's, I believe he's got 250, 60, 70, 80 yards rushing. So he's run the ball. He can hurt you with his legs. And, and you know, he'll take a lot of shots down the field. But they do want to run the football. They've got a bunch of backs that carry the ball. They're big. They're physical. Um, so it's a little different. You know, I think that the way we defend the box is a little different than Hawaii. Well, sure, ben, uh, different coaches have come through here that don't want to mention, you know, the UNR, Reno, whatever, Nevada, whatever. Um, how, how do you approach the, like, the week? 
right there. It's on the wall here, Ryan, right? Um, we came in this morning, and, you know, we talked about it. And it's, um, and obviously, it's not the year that you, you had perceived coming into the season, you know. Um, but we talk, we, we've got, you know, five guys that we signed in that uh, original recruiting class, you know. Um, it's Lex. It's Xavier Campbell. It's uh, Bailey Lowellangi. It's uh, Nathan Jacobson. And who almost am I forgetting? Solid. Oh, Solano Wiley. And those are the only five guys that, um, that played right away. And, you know, they're going into their last deal. They've been through this thing, you know, for four years with us. We've got some other seniors that have been around, but not many. I mean, you know, 10 of those guys in that original class were redshirted. There's some junior college guys that came in and out. But the majority of our guys are still young. So we pulled up all their pictures today. We're on the recruiting trips and kind of talked about their journey and the processes we went through. And, you know, and getting your name on that plaque. You know, you win that, you, you win that game. Your name goes on that bronze plaque. It used to be right there in Rebel Park. It'll be in the new Fertitta football complex. And that's a big thing for legacy. I mean, those five guys have a chance to win the cannon twice. They've got a chance to, you know, do things that a lot of guys that have came through have not done. Um, you know, you know, last year was, was uh, obviously a tough game. We had a lot on the line, and those guys found a way to muster up and get it done. And, you know, we got to find a way to do the exact same thing, get, get in there and just dig in and fight. And the one thing I'm proud of of the last bunch of weeks, our kids, man, you know, they played some good football. Obviously, disappointing game last week, but we played really good football against the team going to a bowl game. Had a, it very easily could have came away with a win. Had we done a couple little things, you know, better there. You know, you go back to, uh, you know, again, the Air Force game in between that Fresno game where they got after us pretty good. It's another six-point game right there. I mean, our our guys have done some good things, and it would have been real easy from the throw in the towel. So I'll tell you what, it, it's a good group of guys, and they're going to they're gonna be ready on Saturday to go. About going my freshman year, I wanted to make a lot of plays with, or whatever. And now to do it my fourth year, playing those, playing those guys uh, three years, this being my fourth year, it means a lot. Uh, like he said, the, um, the plaque. Man, Xavier Campbell talk about it. We were talking about it for like the last three weeks about getting our names and and uh, and stone inside the building. Uh, this the game means a lot. It means a lot to us and the university. We just want to get the cannon back. Is it almost a, a bowl game for you in a sense? I mean, is this kind of your bowl game? Uh, yeah, I would say that. I was I was I was going to tell the running backs uh, uh, tomorrow about um, like we got to go hard in practice because this is our bowl week. This is our last game. It's a rival game. And I, f I feel like all the other guys, uh, the, the rest of the team, they'll take it the same way. Like, this is our bowl game because it's our last game. I don't know how much you want to speak about this, but what do you think about the idea of uh, if you play on a bad day instead of Thanksgiving weekend? Uh, you know, I don't think that's a bad idea. You know, it, it's fun having the rivalry game in the last week of the season. Um, the, the only downside to it is the school's not in. So I remember last year we went up there and played them there, and it, w it wasn't a packed house. You know, you'd expect that to be a sold-out full deal, and it wasn't because a lot of their students aren't there on that weekend. Um, you know, and the same is true for us. You know, we, we've got a you know, big student population here, but not everybody's from Vegas. So I, I think that's why you've seen a lot of teams move off that rivalry weekend or kind of move it around a little bit just so the whole student body is there when, when you have that. So, hey, whatever makes the rivalry bigger, whatever puts more, you know, you know people in the stands, I think that's a big, big deal. So, um, again, I'm all for whatever. Just packs the house and creates an even more raucous atmosphere. You ever talk to uh, Chris Hall about this rivalry at all? Have you ever run across him? Well, you know, it's funny. I've known... It was kind of crazy about it. Oh, big time. Well, you know, one of the things I talk to our guys about is, um, you know, they're really indoctrinated into it a lot faster than our guys. We have to really spend time talking about it because, again, you know, I, I think I, I told the joke, not the joke, I told the story the other day about, you know, us up there recruiting and, you know, the guy at the barbecue place didn't, you know, didn't want to, he was a, you know, you don't know if he grabbed, but he wasn't going to hang anything up because nobody would go there to eat his food, you know. And uh, it's a big deal. You walk into the grocery stores, you walk around town, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it's all over the place. You know, it's a smaller college atmosphere we're here there's a lot of stuff going on so it's not in the paper every single day there's not a new story every single day about it it's uh you know you you just you, you got to make sure that you educate and create that atmosphere so it for our guys it's really living through the experience of playing in the game to really understand what it's about once you do you realize real fast what it's all about you know um i think when vegas was a little bit smaller and there was a little less going on it you know people we got it a little bit faster so here you have to really educate them on it we're up there it's you know it's in their fresh and orientation they're talking about it and you know nobody walks around campus all year round wearing red I mean you know and I'm sure coach all had a lot to do with that so I've known him for a long time long long time back when I was the head coach at California High School one of the best teams they ever had that big uh, that Kaepernick team that you know won all those games they're starting center with a kid, kid that I had coached who went there so I've known him for a long time and, and he, yeah everyone knows that uh, he's a big part of why the rivalry is so intense you have to call that blue band for the week it is it's on for the week the only thing you're allowed to wear is blue jeans <laughs> what 
was the uh, what was the story of the little girl or the little boy that when you guys pulled in? They flipped the team off or something. Yeah, I was explaining. I was trying to explain because it, it was my first time there too, and I'm just kind of reiterating how intense it was. And and you know, I was actually talking to Coach Bear at the time. We're sitting on the bus, and you know, and the bus comes around the corner. He's like, "Yeah, this will be interesting to see him come around the corner." Sure enough, there's all these people with the first two of these two little kids and giving us the bird. I was like, "Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Here we go." <laughs> hey, Tony, I, I don't think you've been asked this, and like, it's the last week I feel like anything's been asked. Do you have anything to say about the speculation about your job and you concerned about it being a distraction? You know, not really. I, I don't. I mean, I got a job to do. You show up every day. You keep grinding. You keep working. I know what we've done to build this program and to make it better. And I know that, you know, obviously disappointing where, where we're at right now. Um, but there's there's some good that can come from it. And, and, you know, you look again, you know, we mentioned we have five guys that have now been through this four year process. We have 10 guys next year that'll be through it and even more and more. It's a young roster. It really is still. And, you know, what? even with all the adversity, you know, it's um, they, they've done a good job of being competitive, you know, you know, in their spurts. We just got to continue to grow. I mean, heck, we're sitting here right now, unfortunately, with three wins, but, you know, we've got two losses by seven points, one by six points. You had a tie game, you know, going into the fourth quarter with SC. At times, we played some really good football. It's just you, we have a tough time still recovering from some of that, you know, that um, depletion, you know, when it, when it comes to injuries and things like that. So no excuses, just, you know, kind of things that have gone on. But where are we going? We're going to a good place, and we're going to keep on building this thing, and a lot of good things are, are happening. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those deals where I've always said you got to be tougher in the situation. You know, there's a reason why, you know, know why you're here you know there's a reason why you've got to keep your head down and keep building on every front every level from the social well-being of the kids to the academic performance of the kid to the facilities and the investments there and and then being able to be more competitive on the football field which is ultimately the most important thing but that only occurs if all those other things are taken care of so again how do you get to a winning place you have to take care of so many different details that are, are off the field that have to do with infrastructure, have to deal with just alignment and vision and the things that need to get done here at the university that will filter into this athletic department, that will filter down into this football team, that will help us not only win, because we've won here before, but it's been separated by many, many years and it's always a jolt up and then back to a 2-1 season, you know. So the whole goal here is to build some sustainability as we go. And we have a plan and we're going to execute it. Do you have anything to say on Drew Techman's effort this past week? Phenomenal. You know, he's a kid, again, coming out of high school. His big decision was, do I play offense or defense? Because he had a lot of schools that offered him defensively. He really was passionate about being an offensive guy, being a wide receiver. Um, and we gave him that opportunity. But, you know, again, with all the guy, you know, w w with the depth issues we have right now in the secondary, uh, we had talked about it a couple weeks ago. Didn't think it was really relevant against San Diego State based on what they did. But uh, going into these last two, we knew that, hey, we were going to give it a shot. And tell you what, he just looked like a natural back. There had a great pass breakup on a on a post route coming across the middle. Uh, obviously, he had the pick. Um, there was a couple times in coverage where he was able to you know guard the guy, and the balls were thrown errantly because of it. But he he looked really good out there, and he was uh, he was a big reason we had a chance to win that game. Alex, uh, Reed has been pretty good at defending the run. From what you've seen in video, what what uh, makes him so effective? Um, I would say they they stopped the run with a pass rush, and they got two really good pass rushers on the edge. Um, so they got a good, complete defense, I would say, but they got really two good pass rushers, uh, number 90 and 24, if I'm not mistaken. So those guys, what, basically collapse and keep you from getting outside? Is that what they do? Yeah, basically. With the Armani back and, of course, Max is a good passer, do you feel like whoever's a quarterback will help you as far as opening up the running game? Um, yes. Um, I would say either, either or they're going to help with the run game. Because we just because our offensive line they've been doing a great job the last last two weeks they've been doing great jobs opening holes so I would say um, yeah either Max or Armani help. Hey so much. Got it. Got it.